Hello, Rob Patrick here from the National Trust for Canada. Welcome to this, the fourth in our series of vlogs on the conservation of the Papineau Memorial Chapel here in Montebello, Quebec. This episode uh, is going to be about roofing. As you can see behind me, the first few panels of the new copper roof are being installed this morning. So, um, but before we go onto the, onto the scaffold to take a look, a little bit about the history of the roofing on the chapel. We don't have any photographic evidence of the original 1853 cedar shingle roof, although we do know from documentary evidence that that was the roof covering. And when we took off the copper this past summer, it did reveal the t very characteristic nailing pattern of a cedar shingle roof. The cedar shingle roof was replaced in the 1880s with a galvanized metal roof that appears in the earliest photos that we have of the chapel, as you can see here. In the 1930s, some 45, 50 years later, that metal roof was replaced with the copper roof that we have today. The 1930s copper roof replicated the batten seam design of the earlier metal roof. And as, as you can see here, the battens elegantly meet at the ridge in a, in a very clean, simple design. And for well over 130 years, this roof has protected the chapel. But as we discovered this summer, as we undertook our project, the roof also had a couple important flaws that ended up giving us some headaches. At the roof ridge, the overlapping copper pans were originally surface nailed, and those nail heads were covered with solder. Over the years, the expansion and contraction of the copper popped those nails in many locations, allowing a small amount of water to penetrate. Another important flaw was the fact that the copper was applied directly onto the roof boards so that any condensation forming on the underside of that metal would dampen the wood. And whenever you have wood that stays damp, it's an open invitation for fungal growth and insect infestation. Unfortunately, that is exactly what we found, a significant infestation of carpenter ants. So while we did have to remove and replace several of the roofing boards, we were luckily only required to make some localized repairs to the roof structure itself. But all this extra work set us back several weeks while the wood boards were manufactured and all the wooden elements were fumigated before being reinstalled. With the structural repairs now complete to the uh, roof structure, and the new roof decking boards are now all in place and having been fumigated. Uh, it's now ready, getting ready for the copper. As you can see, the, there's now a new membrane installed um, that will allow for a separation between the copper and the roof decking. Uh, so no condensation will actually uh, form on the wood. Um, and new battens are in place um, and the ties for the copper. So um, the next step is the copper pans. As you can see, the first few pans of copper are being installed, and at the roof ridge, a new detail that will ensure a much better waterproof seal. In order for the roofing to continue, however, the last of the work on the bell tower has to be completed and the scaffolding removed. With the masonry repairs just about completed and the roof, uh, the new cedar boards on the roof and the copper installed, the new base for the cross is being set into place. With the last of the surprises hopefully left behind us, we are now in the final stages of our project. With a beautiful new cross now set into place, the scaffolding around the bell tower will be removed from the roof, allowing the copper roofing installation to continue. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned for the final episode of our series, where you'll get to see the completed project. Until then, take care.